Shalom, everybody. Rabbi Edelstein here with this week's installment of Rabbi Ian 3, brought to you as always by Moor DC. Check out our Facebook page, Moor DC, the national website, Moor.org, and please be in touch. And it's so beautiful out here. I'm in a genuinely happy mood today. Beautiful, cool autumn day. The humidity in the DC area is gone, at least for the day. Baruch Hashem. It's a day. In fact, don't even listen to me. Shut me off if you want. Go outside if you're in a be- with a beautiful um, weather to appreciate God's beautiful creation. Uh, and it's a beautiful Torah portion. Well, mm, let me explain. There's beauty we can find in it. It's actually a very destructive Torah portion, a very cataclysmic Torah p- uh, portion. And it's the portion of Noah, the second Torah portion in the book of Genesis, in the book of Bereshis. Early generations of mankind not doing so well. Generation after generation degenerating into the worst sort of behavior, which we'll define in a second. So much so that the inconceivable, hard to fathom, to get our heads around, occurs the Bore Olam, the creator of this beautiful world and the creator of mankind, meant to be God's representative on earth, made in the image of God to elevate the world. Mankind had fallen to an unbelievable depth to the point that God said, I'm going to wipe out this whole generation. They can't be saved except for Noah, his three children, their wives in the ark and the animals that would repopulate the world. But here's the point. The world, as the Torah said, says, sorry, was destroyed before God physically destroyed it. That's the actual language of the Torah. It says these are the offspring of Noah. Noah, it talks about him being righteous and wholehearted and perfect in his service of God in those generations. And here's the verse. The earth, they translate usually, had become corrupt before God. But it was destroyed. The world was destroyed already. Now, what were they doing so bad? You name it, they did it. Immorality, oh yes. Adultery, oh yes. Idolatry, oh yes. But you know what? That's not the specific transgression the Torah mentions. What I mentioned, the oral, the oral tradition brings up, Rashi and other commentators quote it, the society was full of all sorts of evil behavior. But what specific explicit sin does the Torah mention? Let me finish that verse. The earth was destroyed before God and the earth had become filled with stealing. Stealing, taking, grabbing everyone from each other, not because they needed to to survive. Stealing on every level. The opposite of what Hashem wanted in the world he made. Olam chesed yibaneh, a verse from Psalms. The world was founded on kindness. God's kindness to his creation We're supposed to emulate God's kindness. We're supposed to nurture and further develop a world built on kindness to our fellow man. Giving, not taking. Giving. That's what destroyed the world. Idolatry is horrible. Terrible sin. Wrong and leads to evils. Immorality of all kinds, horrible. But stealing was, I guess, the most all-encompassing or pervasive sin of the generation, or as some of the commentaries say, the straw that broke the camel's back, finally, because you can't have a society, a world, built on taking and egotism and selfishness. So be a giver, be a giver, because we want to emulate God and do the right thing and live in a beautiful world of giving to each other. Have a good Shabbos.